G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. If you've been paying attention to the War Thunder news and events, you will have known that there was a pretty big crafting event that has just gone by. Now, being someone who is quite busy, I didn't get my chance to actually unlock the plane, and I'm not going to buy it on the marketplace, but there are certain people that definitely did that, um, not on their fault, probably should not have. Now, in this particular match and the matches that we're going to show you, I'm sort of going to talk about the issues that these types of planes uh, bring along. And it's, again, not to the fault of the players that fly them in most cases, but you can kind of see a pattern and you can kind of see something that I think is a little bit, well, it could be better. Let's just put it that way. So I'm in the F4 Phantom and despite being on Malta where it's a small map and those sort of BVR, if you will, uh, map, you know, missile jousting, sniping, etc. contests are not really a large part of this map. I'm going to take them anyway because you never know, they might be useful. Um, spoiler alert, they're not because the enemy team is... Mm, you'll, you'll just have to see how it pans out. So... What I'm doing here is I'm going to climb. I'm going to get myself a little bit of uh, a little bit of space from the engagements in order to sort of start picking off targets of opportunity, those that might be at the highest altitude, or alternatively those that have their butt facing towards me, so I can get them a very cheeky and easy uh, snipe with an AIM-9J. Now, in this case, we are against lots of Germans, Japanese. Sorry, not Japanese. Germans, Chinese, and Soviets, mostly though F4F earlys and SU-17M2s. Now, the SU-17M2s are not an event vehicle, um, and they don't really concern me in too many ways, except for the fact that they have that really early air spawn, and they can sort of sneak up behind people right off the bat. This SU-17 has decided to uh, have a go at my teammate here in the Mirage, and so what I'm doing is looking for a little bit of a lock. I'm going to wait till that circle's right around and then go for it. He's gone into a vertical, bled a lot of speed, and then gone for a turn. So the Aim9J makes a very strong connection there, giving me kill number one. And now that the enemies have sort of started to filter through, I can kind of see where this match might be taking a turn. But then two MiG-21 MFs and an F4F early have arrived on the scene. Now, this guy is just too close to have any AIM-7 action done, so I think I'm going to have to go in with the AIM-9Js. Now, the F4F, as you can see, he's made a nice big turn, so he's bled a lot of speed, and that allows me to not only slot in behind him, but fire a missile that isn't quite well led, but still makes the hit. A lot of the other teammates that are around in this case have also bled a fair amount of speed, and have a look at this F4F early here. As soon as we pass, he turns one way and then decides to turn the other way because he has to avoid the mirage and he um, he manages to put himself in a bit of an awkward situation. I've managed to circle all the way around and there is nothing that he can do. The SU-17 is in a similar position here and that might be down to his inexperience. It also might be down to him being stock, but I think he has just put himself in a bad situation and uh, in order to help his team, he has had to be a little bit more aggressive. That would that would be my hypothesis, but if uh, it's not, then it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Him and the F4F early down here are the only two guys left, which means that this match is over in uh, three and a half minutes, maybe maybe four minutes. So we're not looking at long match times here, and of course it is an absolute club fest for those that do not have the F4F early on their team. Very, very sad for anyone who wanted to fly, say, MiG-21 MF, or MiG-21 SMT, or MiG-21 BIS, or SU-17M, uh, or F-104G, even though you would be a bit of a masochist to fly an F-104G at top tier and expect to do well. Maybe I'll have to make a video on that someday. It's... I, I, I don't get it. I just genuinely don't get it. But it's okay. We, uh, we can have a look at that another time. So, the issue that I see here is that these particular jets are being handed out, and I specifically say handed out to 10.7, or well, people who don't have a 10.7 plane. These people don't have the experience that uh, basically they need to perform well at 10.7, or perform at all at 10.7. A lot of these people that have these planes, or that are being given these planes by Gaijin, are ill-equipped. It's kind of like handing a child an AK and saying, go and fight, because 
I don't know. You, you you weigh up the the consequences there, all the all the morals there. For me, I feel like these players pick up their F4Fs and they go into matches expecting great things or expecting to see, oh, it's a German Phantom. Whoopee, we're gonna grab some uh, some aim nine J kills, all this sort of stuff, um, and then they end up just getting clubbed and. That might not be to any fault of their own. It's, in my opinion, a fault on the side of Gaijin. Gaijin should not be handing out planes that are 10.7 as a purchasable reward vehicle. That is, a vehicle that is going for, I think as of recording, it's going for about 75 Gaijin coin, which is a lot of money. But you know what? There are some people that are going to buy that plane. At one point, it was 85 US dollars. So people still bought at 85 that tells you that there are going to be a lot more of these in the future, and it could just be someone that has literally just picked up the game. Can you imagine someone, or can you imagine when you started playing War Thunder? Imagine the first few hours of you playing War Thunder, barely knowing what to do. I accidentally turned my engine off in my first game of ARB, and I didn't know how to turn it back on, so I crashed. These types of players make rookie mistakes, and, and handing players that don't understand their own controls or the flow of a battle or how to use the missiles or anything like that are going to have a really awful time and it's going to leave a very sour taste of jets in their mouth not only that but it's also very very slyly banking off the hype of a german f4 phantom a lot of people have hyped for this plane for a very long time and of course i could bloody well guarantee you that we are going to get a better one in a few months time maybe even the next patch Maybe it's going to have nice missiles. Maybe it's just going to be a little bit better. Maybe it's going to have more avionics and flares. Who knows? Who cares, to be honest? As long as it's balanced, I don't really mind. So, we're going to have a look at this next battle. Now, I'm going to play a little bit like a uh, like a primate. I'm going to be a, a prime A specimen here that's just absolutely not playing their plane correctly. I'm going to be a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more liberal with my energy, which is not a good thing. You should obviously play your planes properly. Now, first F4F here is just very, very slow in front of me. And this next MiG-21 that I'm having a look at, very nice and juicy, of course, is going to get missiled right there. Have a look at the battle ratings, or think about the battle ratings of the planes that I'm going to be uh, fighting up against here. There's MiG-19s everywhere. There are a couple of F5s, a couple of MiG-21s, and a bunch of... SU-17s, but there are a couple of 10.7s. This is a pretty much full down tier. There are Hunters, F4s, Lightnings, Lightnings, more Lightnings, and a lot of 10.7s, uh, sorry, 9.7s. So this is a match that kind of needs to be carried by the 10.7s, and what Gaijin have done here is they've put a, uh, they've put a 10.7 in the hands of somebody that should not be having 10.7s. And they've just gone and thrown them into a tough matchmaker. So think about this. You're basically, again, giving a kid an AK and expecting them to perform the same way that a fully trained Navy SEAL might. So in my opinion, I think that this is a little bit rough on everyone. Not only that, but you have been noticing that the match timer is not exactly draining at any of these points. These matches are very, very quick. And that, for me, is one of the biggest problems. There is absolutely nothing that you can do as an experienced player if you want to fly a MiG-21 and your team has just vanished in front of you because it's full of players that don't have the experience to cope with 9.7 to 10.7 combat. And for me, that is unfair on everyone, except Gaijin, who get a nice big fat paycheck, and of course the people that decide to sell their F4Fs and uh, go back to... I don't know, prop tier or, or tanks. Very, very stonks move on those guys' part, but I don't, I don't blame them because that's just the way that the system is sort of built. It favors that type of behavior, and for me, that feels a little bit low in my opinion. Quite low, but uh, you know what? Let's take the good with the bad, and what I've done here is just farm these enemies instead. But the fun doesn't quite end or doesn't quite continue as far as you might think. Some of these were the better games that I had, but I had a lot of matches in the F4E that I decided to play before this that were barely one or two kills. And I wasn't getting any kills because everyone else was getting one or two kills as well. 
these types of gameplay, it's it's okay, but it's very very unbalanced, and that that's not very fun. I'll tell you what is fun though: full air brake and uh, full dive for this MiG 19S. Looking very very juicy here, and I'm telling you what, I could sit behind this guy all damn day, like a crit, of course. But I can sit behind this guy because my team has a pretty distinct advantage here. I have plenty and plenty of firepower behind me there in the form of the friendly FGR2. And of course, I have a bunch of enemies that are 9.7 or just don't have missiles. These SU-17s, I'm pretty damn sure don't have anything in the way of missiles. So what I'm going to do is prep myself. Yep, you guessed it, an AIM-7. Send it its way nice and straight dead on course. And up it goes. Boom. Job done. It's pretty much game over for these guys. There are so many letdowns in this situation that it's just not fair on the poor Russians. Sometimes, even if you are a bit of a fanboy, you, you gotta feel sorry. And here I go, getting a little bit greedy. And um, of course, we all know that uh, when you're greedy, everything comes your way. So what I'm gonna do here is try and uh, go for the shot. And of course, I, I pull up and it's all well, you know. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I crash and die like a fucking moron. But um, <laughs> spare me the embarrassment. We're going to go on to the next match. Ladies and gentlemen, I am, as you can probably tell, not bloody perfect. So I do make mistakes. And I think showing you a little mistake here and there actually helps with teaching people a good lesson. Don't get greedy. It's not always meant to be your kill. And just because everyone else is clubbing doesn't mean that you have to be clubbing. Take it easy and save on that damn repair cost because 20,000 silver lions is a big chonky repair cost. Anyway, ladies and gents, we're going to have a look at the final matchup here. And this is where I'm going to be uh, having a look at some missile jousting. 12 kilometers out is, in my opinion, the ideal range. And I'm going to lead the missile because when you lead it, it allows the missile to, uh, I guess track a little bit better. I'm not quite sure how that works, but you lead it and it uh, has fewer mistakes, fewer fewer dumb things happen to it. So F-104G, absolute pain plane, and um, you know, maybe, maybe I should cover it in a video, but we'll have to see as time goes by. I decided that I wanted to go for this F-4F, but then I decide against it and decide to just continue straight forward. Turning all the way around exposes me to things like that F-104G, and I don't really want to do that. Especially if somebody else has some uh, big chonker missiles, and there we go, MiG-21 sitting down low. He could have just fired a missile, and I would have no idea. In my opinion, I think the uh, missile should be visible, visible for the entirety of its flight in order to allow people to dodge things a little bit better. So you would have to be a bit more sneaky. Um, and sneaky is unfortunately what has happened to my uh, teammate there in the FGR2. He's been taken out by the MiG-21. So as a good teammate always has to do, I have to exact some revenge on this MiG-21. But of course, checking my six, checking around me to make sure that there are no enemies that are gonna jump me and do a spook, I decide instead to go for this target here that I can see on my radar. I've got it in, uh, AC, I think it's ACM mode, looking there, and there he is, nice and juicy, and heading towards me quite quickly. So no aim seven for you, just some guns and no dice on the guns, pulling away well before I, uh, go for the uh, you know slap to the face with the 23s you don't want that to happen now I noticed that he was going down and I prepped an aim 9j but at three kilometers I don't think I'm going to use that 9j a lot and it looks like here we are in a bit of a situation where the f4e can shine where it doesn't have anyone sort of chasing after it I'm gonna prep one aim 9j send it off and another one is heading straight for this f4f and boom very, very clean kill. Now, the F4F early here, I have no idea what he was doing, but um, you don't pitch up for someone if you're going to go in head-on, and you, you really shouldn't pitch down either, because if you're in a situation like that, there are other maneuvers that you can perform that give you a better shot, but I decided to be a little bit sneaky, and I actually got away with it, so you can do it, just be super, super careful. Speaking of super, super careful, the F4F is not super, super careful with his speed, and whilst I didn't quite make the uh, missile kill there, the other F4E managed to do it at the same time. Now, because the enemy team has uh, sort of been composed of a little bit more in the way of MiG-21s, dogfights at that sort of tier 
are going to generally favor MiG-21s because they're the ones that can turn easier. It's kind of like putting a dogfight uh, situation between, I don't know, a P-51 and an A-6M-0. Who do you think is going to win 90% of the time? Of course, it's going to be the Zeros. But, you know, in certain situations, it does turn out to be in the favor of the other team. And that's when a P-51 has altitude advantage and can use the others as bait. And that's kind of what I've done here and uh, made the most of it, particularly the F-4s. Now, these particular planes, as I said in my review of that, don't have the acceleration to deal with a low-speed dogfight, even though they have the wing slats, which gives them a little bit of extra turning, so it gives me a bit more of an advantage. Now, I'm going to slot in behind this Chinese F-104G and uh, give him a little bit of brute first, but then send myself a missile, because he's traveling so fast, I don't really expect him to be able to dodge it, but I think he manages to roll out of the way just in time now. I'm going to go up into a vertical here and try and bait this F4F early into stalling out so that someone can get a nice easy missile kill. I'm popping a couple of flares here so that he doesn't, if he ever gets a lock on me, uh, go for the, the cheeky little AIM-9J while we're in a vertical. No thank you. And of course, because he's bleeding so much speed in a very aggressive turn, I'm managing to keep a little bit more speed on him and I've set myself up for quite literally the best rope dope I have done in a long, long, long time. So, rope dope done and the F4F early is absolutely dead. Again, not really sure what the thought process was behind the uh, sort of vertical maneuver there because in that situation, I probably would have just tried to keep my speed. But, like I said in my review of the F4F early, it really relies on having an advantage, or at least the Phantom itself does as a, uh, as a, as a unit, or as, a, as an aircraft. And so when you don't have that altitude advantage, it becomes really difficult to actually do anything. And that's kind of what you've seen here. The F4F early, in my opinion, doesn't really fit the game well, but as I said, it does not really matter, because that is an event plane. It does, however, matter that it is 10.7, not that it should be lowered in battle rating, but certainly that the addition of 10.7 event vehicles should be reconsidered. I think that if you want to put in a high-tier vehicle, it should be, I don't know, something like the Sea Vixen, something that isn't going to be particularly strong, but isn't going to be particularly high battle rating, and of course has a little bit of meme value. The uh, Sea Vixen was only equipped with four red tops I think it was and or four fire streaks so I don't know if you give it fire streaks stock and then red tops at a tier two or tier three upgrade I think that would be absolutely hilarious that thing would be absolutely stupid it's not a good plane it would be very very awkward and of course you only have four missiles so it has very limited capabilities it would make a great 9.3 or 9.7 but um, Gaijin instead decided to put a high tier vehicle in for the hype which I can't really agree with or get behind so, for me, I would probably limit it to 9.3 or 9.0 event vehicles, maybe even lower, uh, just because it ruins the gameplay for like, everyone, really. Those high tier players who always play are going to be either getting clubbed or getting one kill or absolutely nothing, having to sort of pick up leftovers. And of course, the players that just get these vehicles are not going to have any fun. It's just going to be an absolute club fest for them. In my opinion, it's not very fair, and it's just going to leave them with a big, fat Silver Lion bill in the end. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching, and I appreciate any of your time, and of course, any of, your, um, any, any of those that are willing or have put money into the channel. I sincerely appreciate it. In the description or in the pinned comment, I'm going to show you a little uh, GoFundMe that someone has set up. But um, until then, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I'll catch you next time.